All right, what's going on you guys? Getting the most out of the heavy bag. The heavy bag is definitely my favorite tool. Even these days, I'm going in the gym trying to get 10 rounds every day on the bag. It doesn't always have to be hard rounds, but I'm trying to work on the bag, work my skill, power, technique, all of that. You wanna make sure you get the most out of your heavy bag session. Now this is a video I did years ago, which a lot of people like. You can see my old common heavy bag mistakes video back on YouTube. So we're gonna go over some of those again, but I've also got a few new ones, a few new things that I've picked up over the years that I've seen, not just from stuff that I know already, but from all you viewers out there and commenters, some of the challenges and struggles you've been through with working your boxing and working on the heavy bag. So we're gonna go through some of those common mistakes on the heavy bag, how to fix them and be a better boxer. All right, let's get into it. All right, so the first big problem I see with a lot of fighters is just bludgeoning the bag. Not just going wild, but sort of bludgeoning it like as if a real opponent would be this size. And this is the hard part that when you get into sparring, you realize, oh, somebody's chin is just right there. The body shots, this is really all you've got. And not only that, you have to create it. You have to get through the guard. So you wanna to try to treat the heavy bag as precise as a person. Now, it doesn't have to be that crazy, like you're putting axes or anything all over. You can do that, that's not bad. But what I simply like to do is put a piece of tape around the bag if you can. Some gyms, it might not work well if you're pulling the tape off, it's gonna leave a mark. Tie a string or anything around the bag to give you at least a parallel marker. Here, this is the chin. Boom, if I go with my jab, this is the chin. I'm hitting it solid. The hook, middle knuckle, right here. Middle knuckle is coming in, right here. With my right hand. Here, if I go overhand right, middle knuckle or middle two knuckles are landing. Bam, right there. Once you get that target line, and you'll understand how much precision is power. It's probably one of the most important aspects in the power of your punch. If you've played golf, tennis, hockey, soccer, baseball, anything where you have to hit an object, you'll know that the precision and the timing, not just timing in terms of is it the opportunity, but the timing of the acceleration is going to have a huge impact on your power. So the first thing that I like to do is just sort of set up a target for myself on the bag. And you can easily do that with just, it doesn't even have to be an X, just a little line of tape going across. And then I'm gonna work that line. So here I go first, get it going. I'm gonna work it. See, everything is going. Now, if I want to throw the uppercuts here, I can always come a little bit short, that's okay. Or I can guide them up and through. Also, what this teaches me is that if I'm close to the bag, this is where the target is gonna be. It's not gonna be here, although you can go to the body here. It's not gonna be here, it's still there. And it's not gonna be here either. So wherever I move in relation to the bag, I know that this is where I'm aiming. And all it does is give me a nice focal point. Middle two knuckles. Okay, and you'd be surprised how challenging it is just to hit a line going across. You think it'd be easy, but to get that just right, and you want to really work on boom, boom. Muhammad Ali had a saying, you want to hit the bag like there's a bug on the bag. You just want to squash it. So here, ba, 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 boom. Just working that. Boom, boom. And being as precise as you can. This is going to go a long way to help your technique and help your punching power. All right, the next most important concept to understand is knowing your range and maximizing your range. In the beginning, a lot of beginners, they tend to punch at this medium, comfortable range because punching at full range is hard work. Now, full range doesn't necessarily mean till you can barely hit the bag, but there is this small little inch or two that you could be a little bit further back and maximize the work that you're doing for your punching. When you get into sparring, you're gonna find your opponent is further away from you than you realize. 
and you want to maximize the full range of your punches. Not just maximizing the full range of your punches, but understanding that you can work in all ranges. So be aware, if you're here, you're at that medium range. There's nothing wrong with that. But you also want to go out to your full range. And get comfortable with it. Okay, then you can go back into your medium. And know you're there. Or close. Okay, know where you are. Understand your range. Outside. Long. Medium. Close. Extra close. Right up in there. Where you might have to step back to get space. So as a beginner, you don't have to master all the ranges right off the bat. But know which one you're in. And start to work on getting full range. And coming back in. And getting comfortable with all the different ranges of your boxing. One thing that I see for a lot of beginner boxers is because they're hitting a bag, they don't know that they're supposed to release the punch. Releasing from the scapula back here. So when they hit the bag, the bag stops them. They don't know that there's actually this. Here, this release of the punch, this release of the scapula. So when they hit the bag, they're not punching with that release in mind. And also since a lot of beginners are uncomfortable with shadow boxing, shadow boxing is where you learn that release. It may take years before they discover this. So you want to punch the bag, hit the bag. It doesn't have to always be full power, but you still want your punch to release as if the bag isn't there, it's going to come through. So for example, without the bag, I'm here. I'm here. See my scapula release. My shot releases. Here, release. I'm not like this. Okay, so when I go to the bag, I also want that. As if the bag wasn't there, this hand is going to fly right through. I want to release my scapula, release the punch into the bag, which means whap, let it come all the way through. So if I go, there's more to it. It's almost another way to say hit through the bag. Not at the back. Okay, so focus on that for now, especially in your shadow boxing. Releasing the shot. And then when you get to the bag, also try to release through. Let that punch take itself all the way to its natural conclusion. All right, next most common one. Coaches are always yelling at fighters about this, keeping the chin down. Now the thing about keeping the chin down is what happens is you practice with the chin down at that medium speed when you're in the gym. And then when you're in the fight going at 110%, that's when it comes up. So it's not just about keeping the chin down, it's about practicing at fight pace with the chin down. Simulating the sparring and fight experience with the chin down and not being aware of it while you're doing it. So here I want to keep that chin tucked, whether I'm going to put a tennis ball or a face cloth or a towel or whatever I'm doing to keep my chin down, the key is that I want to try to get to that top speed and still be aware of what's going on so I can lock in that position. So here I am, I go, I start, and then I pick it up, and I'm still aware of my chin. I'm going hard, but I'm thinking about this. Okay, trying to keep that chin down under the heat. This is what happens in the fights. You get there, you're going all out, and then it comes up once you get to that full speed. So you're gonna go, feel that, pick it up a little bit. Again. So to build that position, not just keeping the chin down, but also working the bag at top speed. So when you're going that speed in the fight, then the habit of lifting your chin doesn't occur. All right, the next one that's very important when you're working the bag, and you may not even know you're doing this, 
is preloading the punch. Now, this is not necessarily the same as loading up. Loading up, uh, yeah, it does happen, but what I mean is when you work in those punches, they should come straight from where they are. Out. You don't want this, where the hand drops and drives. Now, you'll either see this on the first punch or usually on the third punch. So, for example, here, you'll see it, bam, bam, right? If I go again, bam, bam, boom. Or here, dropping to load it, to straighten it out and point it. That's a bad habit. You want them here, right from where they are. But usually where you're gonna see it is on the hook. Here, one, two, and this is where you see it right there. So you wanna at least be here. Even if you're not here, here. But you don't want this. Dropping the hand and pointing the preload, either off the beginning, very subtle, or in the heat of the action, there, boom. So just be aware of your position. It's like a glass table or a line here. Hands are always coming over. It's okay that it opens to preload a hook, come around with the overhand right, but you don't want this drop down and drive. So something to watch for, and again, just like the previous drill, work it at top speed, build up the speed so you can see where the mistake happens. It's probably gonna happen on the higher end of the speed spectrum when you're pushing it, so that's where you really wanna be aware in working this drill. All right, this last issue is something that takes a while to work out. It takes a lot of awareness and balance. Somebody who doesn't have natural balance may still be doing this after years, and that is to rise up and lean on the bag. You don't realize, if I'm punching this bag, look at that. Look at that, amazing. I'm just resting right here. This is easy. And this is bad boxing, but you can get away with this for a long time. This is why you see a lot of coaches not just working the pads, but working the paddles. Because the paddles forces you, because you can't lean on them, forces you to keep that good balanced position. So you still want to bring that to your bag work as the boxer. You don't want to be here. Because look at this, I can just chill here if I want. I could, look at this, I can almost have a little three second nap in the middle of my bag workout. So you want to really sit back Work on that balance. Give yourself a check. Pull that hand away, pull those hands away and see how you feel. You should be able to go anywhere. And the hands don't touch the bag for too long. Pop, pop. And you're gone. Here, really focus on that. This is something I can say I did in the beginning quite a bit. Here, oh, oh look at this. Can have a nap right there on the bag. So really work it. Really work your balance and get a sense of that feeling. This also happens when you rise up. It's another thing I did a lot in the beginning. Come up, all right, in order to come up to the level of where you think your opponent is or just to take the, the pressure off your feet. Your legs are here. This is hard work. This is hard work. Here all of a sudden, oh, let the hands take over. So you can play with your levels a little bit but you want to make sure that your legs are doing that work. More work in legs and boxing than you think. Part of it is not leaning on that bag for any moment unless you're in there pressing. And also not rising up when you punch. All right, you guys, top mistakes that's going to happen to you on the bag. Not just pure technical errors, but some that happen to heat the moment, some that happen even conceptually over your years of boxing. You think, oh, hey, I've gotten this bad habit or I've gotten to this limited way of thinking about my training and you want to open it up. So work on those aspects, work on those technicalities. It's really going to improve your boxing from the ground up, keep you centered, keep you balanced, keep you aware and allow you to open more possibilities for your techniques and your training. All right, thanks for watching guys. Peace.